Thanks for clicking through to Chamber Web TV. This is Chamber Chat, one-on-one -on -one interviews with business and political leaders in our community. Well, today we're very honored. We're, of course, outside of our Chamber studios. We're here at the Galt Country Club, and we're very excited because, of course, we're going to learn a little bit more about the Canada-Europe trade agreement from none other than our own Member of Parliament, the Honourable Gary Goodyear, Minister of State for Fed Dev Southwestern Ontario. So, sit back, listen, and learn. He's been a great uh, member of Parliament for us. He's held a number of portfolios within the government, um, and right now he holds the uh, portfolio of Minister of State for F Fed Dev Southwestern Ontario. And it's always a pleasure, and more particularly with this subject, it's a pleasure for me to introduce the Honourable Gary Goodyear. Well, that's very kind. I'm not 100% sure how true any of that is, but then, of course, we all know Greg very well. Um, thank you, uh, by the way, to the sponsors for this event. I do know it was short notice, and uh, I'm quite touched and, and humbled, frankly, that folks would sponsor an event to come and hear me talk, uh, uh, completely contrary to the reception I get from my family, but uh, when I do, in fact, see them. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you all, uh, your worship, Donna, Carl, uh, Mike, I didn't get a chance to talk to you. Thank you all uh, very much for coming out. Thank uh, the uh, Galt Country Club as well for the muffins and the coffee. I have had my 15th one this morning, so I am just waking up. Now, I'm here this morning to both celebrate but also to update a little bit on the, this month's milestone, which is, of course, the CETA announcement, which does not stand for the Canada-European Trade Agreement. It stands for a Comprehensive um, a, a Trade Agreement. So uh, even though the acronym seems the same, it is actually the Comprehensive <coughs> Trade Agreement. And when it comes to Canada, as you well know, in international trade, this as, as Greg said, NAFTA was certainly a difficult one because it was the first one of its kind. And we can give that, uh, give that uh, great uh, task its due. But without any doubt, this is the most comprehensive and largest deal Canada has ever made. And we should all both be proud of that but excited and we should be looking for and excited about the opportunities that it presents not only for Canada, uh, not only for Ontario, but indeed for this region and Cambridge. So as you might know, the European Union is the world's largest economy, by far the largest. It has 28 member states uh, and Canada will have preferred access to 500 million new consumers with an annual activity of some $17 trillion. It is the world's largest importing market as well, and that is very good. Uh, in fact, the European Union's uh, annual imports alone are worth more than Canada's entire GDP. Now, this deal has the potential, therefore, to boost our nation's income by about 12 billion additional dollars, all these big numbers, that's about a 20% increase in what we do in terms of bilateral, bilateral trade. Here in Cambridge, uh, this could amount to 1,000 extra dollars in all of our family's income, and it could mean about 80,000 new jobs for Canada. Now, specifically here in Cambridge, uh, southern Ontario region. Our workers actually stand to benefit significantly from this preferred access status. The European Union is the second largest export destination and trading partner to Canada. CETA will eliminate tariffs on key exports that we make here in Cambridge, in the Kitchener-Waterloo region and across uh, southern Ontario, like things that come from advanced manufacturing, metals, minerals, chemicals, plastics, electronical items, uh, all of this growing high-tech information communications technologies. I'll give you a, a very small example of how this will work. Myovision, a, a very, not a very small company, but it is a typical company for Canada just uh, outside of Cambridge. They were telling me that 
they expect to save, it's a small company, $35,000 every single year simply on the loss of tariffs when they ship samples to potential customers, which we all do. And I didn't know this, but when you ship the repair part, if that's necessary, there are tariffs on the repair part. So in that one company's case alone, it'll add $35,000 of sheer profit, which can be turned into uh, uh, advancements and enhancements to the company and ultimately more jobs as they expand. Now exporters in these sectors will also benefit from other CETA provisions that will improve conditions for trade. Provisions, for example, that are just simply around the easing of the regulatory barriers that we face when we trade with other countries. It will reinforce our intellectual property rights and ensure more transparent rules across that entire market. Additionally, the agreement opens up new markets for our world-class services. Now this is a sector that a lot of people don't realize how big it actually is. But the service sector in Ontario anyways is by far the largest sector of Ontario's overall economy. In fact, the statistics that I've looked up suggest that it's about 77% of all economic activity, over $430 billion and some 5.5 million people in Ontario were working in the service sector in 2012. So CETA offers all of these providers, all of these employees, better, more predictable and more secure access to a half a billion new customers. This allows, of course, it allows our companies to compete on a level playing field with their competitors in the European Union. Not to mention, it gives us the advantage of being a preferred uh, customer provider over our competitors in other countries. I don't even need to name who they might be who are also trying to, uh, to sign agreements, which will be years. Similarly, similarly, in the area of investment, this is something I hear in my office very often, where people invest here from Europe, where people here invest in Europe. So CETA will provide Canadians and European investors with greater certainty, transparency and protection for their investments. Greater European investments in our province, in Cambridge and in our growing sectors will obviously stimulate economic growth and job creation comes from that. Uh, not just here in Cambridge, but of course all across southern Ontario and indeed the entire country. Uh, we will have better access at providing new technologies. Uh, we will see an increase in competition in the marketplace, but we will ultimately benefit. Uh, Ontario consumers, workers, business uh, communities, everyone should see benefit from this. So as you can see on this very high level uh, information, our province and all of us have a significant amount to gain from this historic agreement. Now friends, we know uh, from experience that trade is one of the most effective drivers of economic growth. That staying internal is not the way to grow. It certainly isn't the way to go. Uh, but ex uh, selling our products to larger markets, bringing in investments into the country, is obviously the driver of economic growth the world has accepted. By opening up trade with the European Union, we give our entire country more competition. As prices for foods and services fall, wages, salaries, uh, the standard of living by extension would rise. Businesses can expand and grow and uh, reach new markets or perhaps expand their market share that they already have and that leads to growth and the hiring of more workers. And ladies and gentlemen, bottom line is too, on the other side as we buy product from Europe, we actually end up with better choice as consumers and ultimately uh, that greater choice in goods and services is never a bad thing, if you, unless of course you're trying to fill out my Christmas list. But I was very clear that it, I just wanted a four-door, four-wheel, it doesn't have to be four-wheel drive, but <coughs> you can make that choice. 
By actively pursuing new trade and investment opportunities, and let me just go back and say that again, by actively pursuing new trade and investment opportunities like the one that the government has now with the European Union, we will be providing Canadian workers and businesses with preferred access to the largest market in the world, the most dynamic and fastest growing economies and regions in the world. It builds, of course, this builds on our other trade agreements. It is without a doubt the biggest, but as we've made other agreements, whether it's USA FTA or NAFTA, we have improved the model with which we have negotiated trade agreements, and this one is quite formidable in that regard. Now I want to uh, also just touch on the fact that this particular agreement, as large as it is, is has provided us with an incredible amount of experience <clears throat> and the agreement will be the basis or the foundation, if you will, upon which we will continue to negotiate trade agreements with other countries. The conclusion of this particular agreement will help us achieve ambitious agreements that we are after in a number of other member countries, uh, those, for example, of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, um, and those trade negotiations are going well, uh, also with India and Japan. Huge markets, maybe one day uh, with China, although we're not interested in their style of government. Some are. We are not, but we are interested in better access. <coughs> Some people are awake this morning. Now look, we know that companies uh, here in Cambridge and around Bendall is a good example. I met with Bendall um, yesterday, maybe the day before. Uh, Grober Group, there's a number, MyoVision, and we could go on. Uh, Mike knows full well uh, from ComDev the opportunities in some of these trade agreements. In the high tech sector, in the service sector, these areas can uh, find great winnings and great advancements. And when they do, we will see an increase in economic strength, stability, and growth and ultimately a better quality, longer lasting jobs for our families and friends. Now, I have a little more here. While others in Parliament prefer no trade, and some prefer the drug trade, I can tell you that the Conservative government remains committed to what is most important to Canada. And of course, it being quite serious now, <coughs> that actually is the full future potential of this great nation. We remain committed uh, at the federal level, of course, to maintaining, protecting, and creating jobs, but also, ladies and gentlemen, it does appear time to start turning the page from reco recovery to prosperity and seize these opportunities by securing this recovery that we have uh, been so successful at creating. We are committed as well to keeping taxes low. You're starting to hear some rumors. There may be some of that coming, more of that. We've already reduced over 150 different taxes. We are committed and on track to returning to balanced budgets. Of course, we're all committed to keeping our communities safe and standing up for Canada. This is not just fiction or, or political rhetoric. This is actually fact. In fact, as you may know, uh, just this week, uh, Minister of Finance confirmed that we are on track to balance budgets. We are indeed the envy of the entire world with respect to our balance sheets, and we will continue to work very hard. I uh, have to say on a personal note, I was involved in some of these agreements. I can't remember which trip it was and where I was, <clears throat> but in some of my international trips to Belgium and Germany and the UK and others, uh, you know, while I had my own schedule of goals that I had to achieve, we were all positioned to support this trade agreement and try to work out some of the kinks uh, depending exactly where we were. And uh, I do know that some of the details in this agreement were fought out hard and right to the last minute. Some have asked me how come it took so long to get here. The, the answer is quite simply that we did have the opportunities to sign this agreement before a couple of times, but we were convinced it wasn't good enough at that moment for Canada. So we stuck it out, we worked very hard on the agreement, we are now in a position where I am very excited about this agreement. So much so that I'm asking that Canadians look at this agreement for the opportunity the, that it is, 
take your time to examine the opportunities that exist in your particular business and seize those opportunities. These doors are open now. We expect the agreement itself, which is now an agreement in, in principle, to be completed within the next two years. Some technical things will happen, translation and wordsmithing and etc. But ultimately, between now and when this agreement is absolutely signed and in place, when all of these tariffs start to drop off, it would be great if we were ready to seize that moment and really move forward. So with that, I'm more than happy to take some questions, uh, hopefully not too specific because it's a complicated agreement. And you can find the agreement, by the way, on the website industrycanada.gc.ca forward slash CETA. But if I can take some questions, I'd be more than happy to try and answer them. Thank you very much.